once again to Daily Manor, this featured presentation brought to you each and every day by way of St. Mark here in Orlando. My name is Terrence Gray. I'm blessed and honored to have the opportunity to share with you in God's word and grateful for the privilege and the chance. We are working together inside of the second chapter of the book of Romans. We have verse 17 and we will culminate at verse 29. The Bible says, now you, if you call yourself a Jew, if you rely on the law and brag about your relationship to God, if you know his will and approve of what is superior because you are instructed by the law, if you are convinced that you are a guide for the blind, a light for those who are in the dark, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of infants because you have in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth. You then who teach others, do you not teach yourself? Wow. <laughs> you who preach against stealing do you steal you who say that people should not commit adultery do you commit adultery you who abhor idols do you rob temples you who brag about the law do you dishonor God by breaking the law. As it is written, God's name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Wow. Circumcision has value if you observe the law, but if you break the law, you have become as though you had not been circumcised. If those who are circumcised keep the law's requirements, will they not be regarded as though they were circumcised? The one who is not circumcised physically and yet obeys the law will condemn you who, even though you have the written code and circumcision, are a lawbreaker. A man is not a Jew if he is only one outwardly, nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a man is a Jew if he is inwardly, and circumcision is circumcision of the heart by the spirit, not by the written code. Such a man's praise is not from men, but from God. Wow. I'm telling y'all, this book of Romans is deep. <laughs> it's, it's that, it's that, it's, it's, it's simple truths. It's simple realities. And I hope that you heard Paul as Paul weaved his way through that. He weaved it from the perspective of really conversing with people who profess to be Jews, you know, and persons who were under the law. And persons a part of the law also practice circumcision. The Jews who wanted to act as if they were above everybody else because they had an understanding of a God code and a God authority. And then he takes the time to do this nice bridge. And starts talking about people who were teachers who was willing to teach others but not teach themselves. People who were proclaimers of God's word who basically stole in silence. People who robbed temples. People who committed adultery. In essence, you speak against these things only to be a practicer of these things. These are the things that you do. And he's clear to say, ultimately, uh, you the reason why folk can't get saved. Because when people see you in light of what you do, ultimately they cannot hear God 
Because here you profess to know God, but your behavior has not conformed to God. Wow. You know, some, somebody, somebody, somebody made a statement long years ago. I'd rather see a sermon than to hear one preached any day. Y'all know that? You remember that? In essence, I'd rather for you to live it than to talk about it. Because I can, I can, I can catch your life rather than try to follow what you say. Because what you're saying has to line up with how you're living. So that means we've got to always be careful as believers to know that when we profess Christ, somebody is looking at you. When you profess that to know Jesus, somebody is looking at you. And what do they see when they see you? Do they see Christ in you? Are they looking at a godly person or are they watching somebody who appears, who professes Christ, but is far from what Christ is all about? You see, I go back to what I, uh, what the beginning of the year in January when the people found themselves going into the capital when they raided D.C., and if you watched, they paused in the midst of that and had prayer. They prayed to God. They apparently prayed to God. The question becomes, well, help me understand, what about your law breaking? Because you have broken law. You've broken law in the process only to get there and to talk to God. How, well, how does that measure up? How does a, a newborn babe in Christ see a person who does these things? Do they not have to pause and question, well, what's going on? When they watch your behavior not lining up and according to God's word, uh, what's going on? See, the Gentiles were the babes in Christ and the people who were coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ or coming to have faith in that which was the teachings of even the Old and New Testament. See, accepting of Jesus Christ was an opportunity to go back to understand what the Jews were practicing or what they were reading and understand according to their scripture, their text, what God has already said and how Jesus is the revelation of the Old Testament because that was what was being taught. Well, here are people who knew the Old Testament who were now struggling to accept Jesus Christ but your practices and your behaviors of even following the existing law does not measure up. So you're causing the witness, you're causing for the people who are new Gentiles, who are new believers, when they see you, they see your lifestyle and our message as blasphemous. It's hypocritical. It does not measure up. It makes no sense that's what Paul says and Paul basically comes right back to ultimately say that when Jews practice this whole conversation of circumcision, circumcision is the outward cutting of flesh uh, of the man's private parts but he says that's an outward thing that's outward that's an outward sign of purification, outward sign that you're coming under the covering of the Lord, covering of the Jewish customs. But what he does say even more is, but what needs to be done is not so much the outward circumcision as much as the circumcision that takes place in the heart. There's an inward cutting, an inward purging, an inward changing that has to happen. It's all right to be in church. It's all right to come to church. I miss being in the sanctuary with God's called out people. But guess what? It does not mean we still cannot be the church. Because being the church means I carry myself in a way within the community and in my home that allows God to, God's light to shine forth in me. That he may have a chance to get glory when others see the works and they glorify the Father. I recognize all of us along life's journey have fallen short of God's glory. Me too. 
miss the mark, me too. But in the midst of it, have we wallowed? Or have we found our way to have a heart for who God is and to love God enough to keep striving to be what God wants us to be? Paul in this chapter clearly says to us it's more than lip service. It must be action. Do you love him enough to follow, obey, trust him here? Or is it just something you do so that you basically can say, hey, I went to church. Hey, I'm on the usher board. Hey, I'm in the choir. Hey, I work on the yard for the parking lot manager. Hey, I work in the kitchen. Hey, I work with the youth. Hey, I'm an armor bearer. Hey, I'm a minister of the gospel. But guess what? What does it say about here? Remember, God's going to judge the heart. So for what reason are you doing it? You doing it so that man can see the works? Or are you doing it because God sees the work? Because when God sees it, he's looking at the for what reason are you doing it? Rather than what you did. Trust me. I want God to clean me up from the inside out and not for me to show myself clean from the outside in. <gasps> Baptism is an outward expression of an inward change. If you ain't changed from the inside, baptism means nothing. And if you're going to be a person who claims to be a follower of Jesus Christ, get the inside right so the outside will be all right. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for this week. I've had a marvelous time. I pray you've been blessed. I pray you've been inspired. I look forward to us being together next week. Don't forget, tomorrow we do have church. It's at 930. I want you to be a part of our Facebook Live YouTube experience for worship as well as don't forget that we also have church at 10 o'clock with our Zoom uh, 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 opportunity for a seat from the east side as well as we have the prayer call every day, every day of the week, 6 a.m., 6 p.m. Please be a part of it. I want you to be with us. Information regarding it should now be on the screen. I'm thankful for the opportunity for us to have this time together and I look forward to us being together. Until then, I love you and God bless.